uh, my presentation is concerned with drug utilization studies and the rational uh, use of drugs. And in the second, this in fact is not a prescription. In fact, the doctor he asked for complete blood picture and uh, urine analysis, but he wrote it on a prescription, one of his prescription, and the patient he took it to the pharmacy and he was given uh, B-complex and Uricol, which is a urinary antiseptic. And this is uh, a prescription for a four-month-old uh, baby. And as you can see, the amoxis serum, atrevine, uh, drops, and VIX lozenges for four-month-old baby. So in fact, this is another type where you can do prescription analysis and so on. And you can also, in the, in, under the term drug utilization studies, you can uh, compare between the or uh, study or analyze the pharmaceutical advertisement whether they are worthy of publication, whether they contain any uh, reliable information. And as you see, in comparing our studies results with those of Wilkes, which is now a traditional uh, uh, study published in 1992, almost the same. About 86 percent in his study were safety claims were correct, while in our study 88 percent lacks information on drug interaction, cautions, and contraindication. 44 percent would have led to improper prescribing, while in our study 61 percent contained misleading information, and the educational value was little or no educational value in about 97 percent compared to the USA study 57 percent. 32 percent should not have been published at all in our study, which is quite similar to 28 percent should not have been published in the USA, and 45 percent needed a major revision before publication. And in another study, what we did, we did the three-day pharmacy drug dispensing behavior, and we asked a fifth-year student to sit in a pharmacy with the pharmacy and observe his uh, pattern of dispensing. Number of visitors is 426. Children about, constituted about or comprised about 11 percent. Patient with a prescription 25 percent. Patient without a prescription asking for OTC drugs about 76 percent of the 57 and asking for prescription drugs 33 percent. They are asking for prescription drugs but without bringing in a prescription. Diagnosed and given prescription, so the pharmacist assumed the role of the physician, and he diagnosed the patient. He gave prescription drugs about 34 percent of number two of those who were asking for prescription drugs. Those who the pharmacist advised to see or consult a physician, and they accepted the advice about 60 percent, while 40 percent rejected. Visitors seeking general information about 6 percent. Major problems identified in clinics, of course, the long waiting time, short consultation time, uncertainty of doctors, availability whether the doctor is available or not, inadequate physical examination, diagnostic processes, laboratory facilities, and drug supply, and the polypharmacy. So the patient trying to avoid all these uh, inadequacy, and he goes directly to the pharmacist. Consequences of rational drug prescribing that can be expressed as unnecessary expenditure of public and private money, uh, exhaustion of the limited resources for the drugs, mismanagement of diseases, increased risk of adverse and toxic effects, drug-drug interactions, and the emergence of uh, drug-resistant microorganisms because of the misuse and overuse of anti infective drugs. Rational dispensing that in the pharmacy sometimes the staff, they are unqualified, other only pharmacy assistant without a proper pharmacy, pharmacist in the pharmacy. And dispensing drugs to children with or without a prescription, children who are sent by their families in the neighborhood of the pharmacy, to patient on basis of descriptive complaints without being diagnosed by a proper physician, prescription drugs being liberally dispensed as OTC. Uh, this is, uh, in fact, is the case in almost most of the developing countries. The drugs are dispensed whether they are prescription drugs or 
OTC. OTC prescription drug interaction, interactions between drugs prescribed by physician and those purchased by the patient himself and dispensing prescription drugs irrespective of prescription form whether it is the ideal form although the prescription is a legal document and can be taken again to the pharmacist and the physician and can be taken uh, to their side in case of any uh, medical error. A prescription drugs altered by the pharmacist without consulting with the prescriber. A rational consumption on the uh, side of the patient whether the drug is really needed or not because most of the patients they are demanding and the lack of good doctor-patient communication the, uh, the doctor's skills of communication sometimes is not that good. The consultation time if it is too short should not be enough for the patient to take good information from the uh, physician. The trust between the patient and his doctor, self-medication, the habit of self-medication among the patient to avoid long waiting hours at the clinics and so on. Of uh, course, if the uh, drug is expensive, which is prescribed by the physician, the patient, will, if he cannot afford it, he will not take it, and this will lead to under-treatment and unintentional compliance and non-compliance and the compliance because most of the uh, uh, rational consumption and the errors and the adverse effects they are related to about 50 percent of the non-compliance uh, less information provided by the prescriber who is the physician and the dispenser thank you very much any question or comment thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes this rational rational of drug use or rationality of drug use. I think it's just a word. Whether it's a third world country or a first world country, there is no rationality in drug use. I'll give you one example which may be wrong. Statistics may not be right, but 90% of people who take medicine for any problem actually don't need treatment. Only 10% people need to see a doctor. Out of that, only 1% actually need to see a very good doctor or a specialist and get some investigations done. So the drug companies are earning on 90% of the people who do not need any drugs. And when we talk about cost-effective drugs, that does not necessarily mean I would say mostly means cheap drugs, useless drugs from third world country, the C grade companies. I've seen companies in India and I would say similar companies in Pakistan, Bangladesh. You go to a little street and there is a drug company. They buy bulk, they just make tablets. They are all mixed up. People don't take showers, they don't wash their hands and they are just made into tablets. And those tablets are let's say two dollars thousand tablets and the same tablets are sold in first world country as a dollar a tablet it is a big business it's billions and billions I think it's the third largest or second largest um, business these days now coming yes. to coming to um, how to how to be rational uh, in using drugs the, the only way I think is educating the prescribers, that means the doctors and yes. the, the public that should never get over the counter drugs. But for that, the whole country has to be educated in the sense that a doctor should be paid his fee, whosoever paid, pays it, whether the government or the patient, even if the doctor tells no medicine required for you, pay me my 50 rupees or 50 dollars or dinars, go home, if you need me, come back tomorrow, I won't charge you. So there should be reward given to everyone to be true. The problem is that we pay 30,000, for example, dollars in New Zealand and about 300,000 rupees in India to get a bypass surgery but if the same doctor taught them how to eat and drink and take three yes. hours to teach how to eat and drink they won't get more than thirty dollars or fifty dollars so sure. we pay we pay 
people to drug us, we pay people to cut us, we pay people to do sophisticated things on us. Now with that, as you have mentioned, multimedia, direct to consumer, is another yes. big, big rogue of this society. I don't know how to look after those. Um, there, there are quite a, quite a few interesting uh, topics. You started with WHO and I thought you will be stuck with WHO and, and all the greatness, you know, this is what we want to do, that is what we want to do. But then you came to those three prescriptions which you showed us. Wonderful examples. And that's the truth. That is exactly what's happening. Over-the-counter drugs, neighbor goes, gets any medicine they want to, you misuse the drugs, you come out, uh, you get prescriptions which have no value, and you, you are hailed very good chemist or a doctor. Now, the biggest problem comes to great doctors, doctors like you, like me, and like all those doctors who are attending this conference, they have high hopes, they, they are all uh, utopian thinking doctors. They think there could be a rational use of drugs. Impossible. Antibiotic use. Impossible. May 90 percent of the people are given antibiotics for no reason, with a reason that if I didn't give the antibiotic, the patient won't come back to me, he will go to somebody else. So we do not even have confidence in, in ourselves. I would like to congratulate you for those three prescriptions you have shown us. I loved it. And I am I, I'm very worried. Aren't you reprimanded yet by the peers or the system for showing those three prescriptions? I'm sure you must have shown them to many more people in your life. Mm -hmm. No, no, because although, I mean, some of those people who wrote the prescription, they are a close friends of mine, I mean, but they are consultants. Ah, okay. They should yeah. really uh, be ashamed, I mean, to write something like this. I Absolutely. know consultants Absolutely. who are really very, very, very accurate in writing a prescription. You find good doctors who write a yes. very well-balanced prescription. Rational drug use, I mean, we try, we put effort to study. Yes and uh, to uh, carry out studies in different areas which cover the uh, rationality of uh, drugs and using uh, of consultant and physicians and using drugs and you don't need even to analyze it you just feed it back to them they can see their mistakes Absolutely. but the effort I think it should carry on as you mentioned earlier I mean the mass media the uh, education increasing the awareness of the public Absolutely. and also educating the doctors. Uh, uh, some medical uh, uh, schools, they don't teach prescription writing in their courses, mm. whether pharmacology mm. or medicine. And, uh, and the uh, people, they are not really aware of how to mm. write a well-balanced prescription. And uh, pharmacists sometimes, they tend to just sell drugs. I like the uh, system in Canada where uh, they don't have any profit on the medicine. They sell it for the same price as they receive it. Absolutely. But they are paid Absolutely. by the insurance or the government, which is mm. good. Mm. So you you are not pushed really to to sell the drugs. I think mm. a, a rational a rational drug use, just like pollution, we all mm. contribute to it, but we don't do anything about it to improve it. So in fact, if the efforts are joined, I think we can do something at least by yeah. improving, for example, the misuse of antibiotics if we reduce it from 50 percent to 40. I think we did something. Yeah. Yeah, uh, what I what I generally feel is that forums like this. Uh, I am very emotional, sentimental person. I, I would ask everyone, please take a vow today. All junior doctors, please take a vow today. No matter what, never ever give drugs only to satisfy the patient. You should give drugs when you think is absolutely necessary to be given. Give them more time. Yes. Give them more time rather than more drugs. Um, Dr. Sharif, yes. it was a beautiful eye-opening presentation and I congratulate you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks.